Hey, Matt 31, I had a question coming out of section 5.5, .5, number 37. And here we were asked to get a transformation and graph a function and then get me the asymptotes, both horizontal and vertical. So this one asked us, hey, can we take the reciprocal squared function and the reciprocal squared function, one of your toolkit functions, is one over x squared and shift it two units right. Well, when we're moving right and left, we want to do our adjustment inside the grouping symbols. And even though this doesn't look like it has any grouping symbols, let me erase that real quick. This is technically one over x minus zero squared. So if I wanna go two units right, I need to put a two in this position. And that's where you see my, my squared reciprocal, or my reciprocal squared function shifted two units right. So there is my equation. And then if I look at that equation, right, it asked me to graph it, so I graphed it. The, the vertical asymptote is over here at x equaling 2, and that's the basic shape of the reciprocal squared function. And again, if you don't remember your toolkit functions, they begin on page 174. You've got to know what these basic graphs look like. At that point, they're asking us to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. And one thing I, I want to just mention is whenever, oops, it went to an eraser, whenever you have a function, Make sure you look at its domain. And again, the three domain issues that we ever run into in here are when we have fractions, radicals, or logarithms. And for this particular problem, we don't have a logarithm, we don't have a radical, but we do have a fraction. So I need to address when is the denominator zero. So just taking a look at that, that denominator, if I zero it out, it zeroes out at x equaling 2. And since x equaling 2 zeroes out only the denominator, right? So let me put a little note here. Zeroes out only the denominator. That is where our vertical asymptote lives. So that's why I have that we're, we've got a vertical asymptote at x equaling 2. The, the way that we're going to deal with the end behavior is if I look at this this poly, or this rational function, the degree in my numerator is zero and the degree in the denominator is two. Okay, and it's zero here because I have a constant. There is no x term and it's two here because, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the exponent. Now, we talked about end behavior and there's a case for end behavior whenever the degree, oops, let me erase that. Whenever the degree in your numerator is less than the degree in your denominator, you're always going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And that's why we've got that end behavior at y equals zero. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.